Hey everyone, in today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to adjust the dimensions of this rug, but still retain the original scale of the patterned texture. Okay, I'm going to take a little copy of that rug and I'm just going to double check its dimensions. So I'm going to use my tape measure to do that. So that's 2238 by 1615. Okay, let's just say this rug is 2400 by 1700. So that's one of the standard sizes of rugs that you would see a lot online. If I just take another copy of that and use the scale tool to adjust its size, you will see that when I adjust the size of that rug, using the scale tool that the scale of the pattern increases as well and that's not ideal when you're presenting to clients and you have plans or elevations and the scale of the actual texture or pattern isn't replicating that of real life okay so it's always important important to ensure that you're replicating the real life patterns and textures so let's delete that and let's make another copy. And I'm going to show you now how to increase the size of this rug or geometry or 2D face, whatever way you want to pronounce it, whilst retaining the original scale of that pattern. So what we're going to do is zoom in so that we can see this really clearly. We're going to double click so that we can edit. We're going to create a guide so let's click on the midpoint. You don't have to use the midpoint, it's just good practice. So click and drag following the green axis and type 2400, which is our measurement uh, for the length. And what we're going to do is select the top edge. We're going to select the move tool. We're going to click on the midpoint. Again, you don't have to use the midpoint, it's just good practice. So we're going to click and drag following the green axis. It's so important that you follow the appropriate axis because if you come off that, look what happens. The geometry is no longer precise. You must stay on the appropriate axis until you reach the guide point and you will know that you've reached the guide point because you'll see a red square and you'll also see a label that says online and then click. And then we're going to select our select tool and we're going to click in the safe space above that right here once. Just click once to close that action. And there you go. We have adjusted the length of that, but we have retained the scale. So let's do the same on the horizontal. We're going to double click. We're going to select our tape measure. We're going to hover over the midpoint. We're going to click and drag following the red axis and we're going to type 1700 and then enter. There is our new guide and we're going to select this edge. So you can either just click once or you can click and drag. You know, there's a lot of different ways to produce the same result in SketchUp. We're going to select our move tool. We're going to click on the midpoint and then drag until we reach that guide. And we know that we have reached that guide because there will be a red square and there will be a label that says online and then click. And we're going to click on our select tool and then click in the safe space above that to come out of there. And as you can see, we have increased that rug size, but we have retained the original scale. If you would like to remove the guides because the guides were created after I double clicked, you would need to double click that component to remove those guides. So we'll double click, we'll select the guide until it turns blue and then we'll press delete. Again, select the guide, press delete and then click in the safe space either at the top or the right hand side of it and then click. Or what you could do, and I'm just going to undo that, if you wanted to permanently remove those guides, you could simply just go to edit and then delete guides. So there you go, guys. That is how you adjust the dimensions of a 2D symbol uh, while still retaining the original scale of a seamless pattern. 
that you have applied. Although you can use the same workflow, but for different instances. So for example, here is a kitchen elevation. And let's say we want to change the size of the material that we have used in this piece of art. So what I'm going to do is just group this because I have exploded it for some reason. So let's just make a group of that and just make a copy and let's zoom in and take a look at this. So at the minute, if we just get our materials tray, get a little sample of that, it's 260 mil wide. Let's say that was a mistake and that we made a mistake with that and it should be 240. Let's just change that to 240. Look what happens. Uh, but this is not uh, anything to get panicked over. This can be adjusted very easily. So I'm going to double click so that I can edit this and I'm just going to reposition that piece of art, okay? And I'm going to get it kind of as centered as I can using the current frame. And then I'm just going to select done. But you can see that after I click out of that, there's a still a little bit of the texture because it's tiled. So there's a little bit appearing here and there's a little bit appearing here. And I would like to bring the sides of this frame in a little because there's too much uh, width either side. So how do I change that? Let's double click that group. And I'm going to select the top part of the frame. OK, so I want that top rectangle. And in order to do that, when I click and drag, I need to overshoot a little to make sure that everything um, in that top rectangle has been selected and then release. OK, so you can see that there's a blue line right here and there will also be a blue line right here. You just can't see that clearly. And I'm going to select the move tool. I'm going to hover over the midpoint and I'm actually going to zoom in here so that I can move this precisely. And I'm going to click and drag following the green axis. As I said previously, if you go off that, you will no longer have precise geometry. So follow the green axis and I'm going to move down until I'm pretty happy that that part of that tiled texture is no longer visible. If you look in the bottom right hand corner, you will be shown the distance that you have moved uh, that geometry, which is 18 mil, and then click. Then I'm going to pan up so that I can see what's going on down here. I'm going to select my select tool. I'm going to highlight the geometry that I want to move at the bottom. I'm going to click, or sorry, I'm going to select the move tool. I'm going to hover over the midpoint, click and then drag in the direction of the green axis. And I could either move that up uh, to where visually I want it to go, or I could type in 18 millimeters so that it's the same distance as above. I'm just going to zoom out there and I'm going to select everything on the left hand side. I'm going to select the move tool. I'm going to hover over the midpoint. I'm going to click and drag following the red axis. And you will notice that SketchUp is snapping onto the distance of 18 mil because that is the previous um, dimensions you have used. And if you're happy with that, you can just click and then do the same on the right hand side. So you can either use this midpoint or this midpoint. It doesn't really matter. And let's just snap that on 18 mil. Select the select tool, click off that, and that's it. We have adjusted the 2D geometry after having applied a texture or material.